Hi everyone, this is a quick video about the weighted cost of capital. I will be going over this again uh, when we do this in a collaborate session, but there's a few of you that are ready to move on. So I thought I'd do a quick video and then you've got something to be going on with. Now these borrow extensively from some handouts by Professor Allport and they are available on the modules. If you can't access those handouts, drop me an email and I'll put them up on the Google Drive. Okay. So why do we need a weighted capital, cost of capital? Well, the fact is that capital comes from many sources. Without a weighted figure, we don't have an accurate measure of how much our cost of capital is overall. Okay, so for a super simple example, say we've got $100 worth of debentures or, or bonds, $100 worth of shares, so we have $200 worth of capital. It's a ratio, weight ratio of 50-50. We've got a market rate of 10% on the debentures and 15% on the shares. So the weighted cost of capital is 10% um, of the 100 uh, is $10, 50% of that is $5, 15% of $100 is $15, 50% of that is 7.5, and so we've got 12.5% there. So that's a very simple example. So if I was going to do that in, say, Excel, this is all the same Excel table, by the way, I'm just showing you with different formulas. So to calculate the weight of the debentures and the shares, I simply took the total capital and that was, sorry, I took the cost of the capital of, de, of debentures and divided by the total capital. And that gives me the weight. In order to work out the weighted average cost of capital for each um, row here, I took the market weight value times its weight times the market rate and that gave me the value here and then I added it all up together to get the final answer. So there's a few steps to working out a market value of weighted cost of capital. We start with the market value of debt. Um, so if there's debentures there, work out the market value per debenture and multiply by the number of debentures. There's overdraft that comes into that, the actual amount. Don't put trade credit in here, that's not considered a cost of capital. We need to work out the market value of shares. So if you look at the balance sheet there, work out the number of ordinary shares and multiply it by market price. And you also work out the number of preference shares and multiply that by their market price. Next step is to complete the percentage cost. Okay, Debentures, you need to consider the current market yield times one minus the tax rate, Okay, because we've got that tax incentive there that we can claim. Okay, If the yield's not given, we need to work that out using the methods that we've already looked at. For an overdraft, look at the effective rate per annum. Okay, and remember that the effective rate per annum may be different than the quoted rate. Okay, remember that when uh, when the per annum figure is worked out in multiple periods per year, then it won't be the exact same thing as the per annum rate. Okay, bear that in mind. Okay, so we've got the current yield with one minus the tax rate. Uh, preference shares, dividend divided by market price, ordinary shares, dividend growth model, or the CAPM model, okay, which you'll have heard of. I can talk a little bit more about that at a later date if you like. That's sort of more in my wheelhouse anyway. There's other types of equity like retained earnings. Don't include that because that's already considered in the shares, okay? So let's look at this fixed mountain example. Let me just make that a bit bigger. Oh, that did not work. So I'm just trying to, there we go. The fixed mountain uh, exercise, okay, so this was directly from that module, okay, this is what the information that was given to us, let's see if I can, sorry. we had some more information here, okay, let's do that one, I'll just run through it quickly, first of all we need to work out the market value of debt, for debentures we have, they are a thousand dollar face value, there's a 10% coupon, there's 10 million outstanding, and redeemable in five years and 18% yield currently. So that implies that 10,000 debentures exist, paying $100 coupon per annum. So what's their market value? Well, the market value of debentures or bonds is really a present value, okay? So I've got here my mock-up of a calculator, okay? So we could put, so we, if you wanted to see how I do it exactly, I'd say point, uh, no, I would not do that. I'll just touch it on. So 0 0.18 goes into the interest, okay? 5 goes into N, the future value, so 1000 zero, zero, zero goes into future value, the payment is 100, 100 zero, zero goes into payment, and then we need to compute the present value, which will give us a price of 749.83. Remember that you needed to clear your memories first, which is the second alpha 
zero and then another zero. Okay, so that gives us the market value of debentures. So the total number of debentures outstanding was 10,000, so the total market value of those debentures is about 750 million, give or take. The cost of debenture capital is the yield 1 times 1 minus the tax rate, or 0.18 times 1 minus 0.39, or 0.11, or 0.1098 as per the solution stock. Okay, we need to work out what the cost of the overdraft is. The amount is 5 million, it's a semi-annual payment, okay, but it's quoted as 15% per annum. We need to remember what the effective rate per annum is, okay, so we need to get that out. So again, if we clear our memory, second alpha zero zero, this is such a good mock-up of the calculator, I wish I'd thought of this weeks ago. Okay, so we're going to, there's two periods per annum for a semi-annual, so we put in two into xy. Then we put 15 because that's the percentage interest rate in and then we put second function and then there's the EFF button and that will give us our effective rate of 15.56%. But remember that's a double up because we've got that tax incentive there because we don't pay tax on the cost of business. Okay, so we have to remove that. So 15.56 times 1 minus 0.39 which gives us an effective rate of 9.49% of the cost of the overdraft cost of capital. So we've got 5 million Preston shares issued. They're traded at 40 cents per share, so they've got a market value of 2 million. There's a 5 cent dividend, which makes it a 10% on 50 cent issue price. So the cost of capital there is 12.5%. Ordinary shares work in a similar way. There's 10 million issued. They're currently traded at $3 each, so there's a market value of 30 million. The cost of capital on shares, we're going to use the um, CAPM model. So that's the risk-free rate plus beta times the market portfolio rate minus the risk-free rate, which comes out to 20.8%. If the CAPM is confusing to you, let me know and I'll do another video. It's actually quite a simple concept. Um, it's one of the first things I learned, actually. Okay, so... Because I do like a table, I do like a good table, in exams, in Excel, wherever they are, let's do this. Now, it's very similar to that very simple table that I gave you before. So to work out the weight of each part of capital, we take the market value of that capital and divide it by the total capital that we've got, okay? Now, the um, after-tax cost of capitals, we worked all of that out before. And so to work out the weighted average cost of that component, we come down here, this is the same table, and we've got weight times the after-tax cost, okay, that's the weighted average cost, and that gives us the total down there, okay. All right, now the last part was that the 17.5% calculated is the required rate of return necessary to maintain shareholder wealth, and that's the discount factor that we've been using for a calculation of net present value. However, any weighted average cost of capital is appropriate only if any financing of new projects doesn't alter the capital structure that we've just used to calculate that, and the risk of proposed projects is identical with the risk presently undertaken by the company. Now, these two particular issues are big ones um, when working things out in real life, because always it's going to be something that changes that. So that makes this weighted cost of capital a dynamic calculation for the vast majority of companies. Okay, that's everything I've got on that one. If you've got any further questions, let me know. Like I said, I will be going over this in a collaborate session in the future. This video is just for those of you that are ready to go with this particular material. Have a great night, and I'll speak to you all tomorrow night and collaborate.